will be this Gillespie because he, you know, I owe him everything. He saved me with everything. Yeah. As people say, he didn't he didn't put me in the map, but he tried. <laughs> <laughs> he tried very hard. And the other two, the One of them, of course, in any order, is Mena Ferguson, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. If you're a proper player, and if you are not a big fan of Mena Ferguson, you are deaf or you are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not deaf, I'm not an idiot. I'm a big fan of Mena. And I was so lucky I met him many years ago in May. 1978, I met him in the Carnegie Hall, and I'm going to tell you something. He, he, his manager came backstage. We just came from Cuba for the very first time ever in the U.S. Ever. They flew us, CBS record flew us from Cuba straight to New York. We came straight to the sound check, and then we checked in the hotel after the show. But when we were there, at the, by the end of the sound check, Mayor Ferguson, the manager, came to me and said, Are you Sandoval? Well? I said, Yes. I said, Okay, I am the manager of Mayor Ferguson. You know who he is? They said, Oh man. Not because I don't speak English well, and I, I, you know, I know who he is, of course. He said, He's on his way, on his way over here. He's going to be here in a few minutes. And he asked me to talk to you. He would love to play a couple of tunes with you in the show tonight. By the way, that was uh, the band from Cuba by the name of Irakere. And we, yes, we played the second half of the show. The first half was the Milo Williams trio and Bill Levin trio. That was the first part of the show. And we played, we played the second part of the show. And then, okay, Maynard, to tell you the very uh, long story, a little short version, he came to the dressing room with his horn and everything and ready. He would embrace and kiss him and say, oh my goodness, couldn't believe it. And then I look around there and there was Dizzy, there was Stan Guest, was, uh, uh, oh my goodness, Woody Herman, Tito Puente. There were so many people, that Mario Bowser in the dressing room. So it was like a hundred people because that was the very first time in 28 years that a Cuban musician came to the U.S. That was the very first time in 28 years. And then, when I looked to my horn, it wasn't this horn, of course. <laughs> it was also falling apart, you know. It was a very ugly horn. I got a rubber band over here. And uh, it was, you know, no, no uh, plating at all. The plating gone in 19... that come. <laughs> and, um, and, and he said, what kind of horn is that? Said, man, the only one I find in Cuba, you know, there is very difficult to find a horn. I'm lucky I got a horn in B flat. <laughs> <laughs> Could be something in C sharp or whatever. <laughs> I found one in B flat. And then he said, he opened his case and he got a horn loose like this, you know, gold plated. Beautiful. He said, try my horn. That was before we went to stage. This is a true story. God is there. And uh, he said, try my horn. Yeah. I was 
was very, very lucky to meet him a few times, of course, through Dizzy. This introduced me to him, and then we played a couple times in Europe. Unfortunately, I don't have a recording that. One of my wish is a recording with Zorka Peterson, but maybe, you know, later we're going to get together up there. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a chance. I still have a hope to do that. But okay, but um, Oscar Peterson is uh, one of the, those musicians you see him or hear him playing. I said, man, this is so easy. <laughs> how we do it so easy? And how much, it, it, instead of being suffering, he's having fun playing the piano. Playing. He's having so much fun. And I, so, I, I, I consider myself so lucky and I'm very blessed by God. Uh, for the last um, 12, 13 years, I got in my living room one of his personal piano. Yes. He got two of them. He got one in, in Canada, he got another one in Philadelphia. I got the one he used to have in, in his apartment in Philadelphia. I got it home and I, it for me is like a, a, the best gift, one of the best gifts I got from God. I, I, I get up in the morning and he said, what's the door for you? Know, the, a little bigger than that. He said, 9.6 and a half foot. <laughs> it's a little, a little bigger than that. And I said, it's a wonderful instrument. But I get up in the morning and I sit down. It's like a bomb for your soul. And one of those mornings, I got out many years ago, and I wrote this tune for Oscar. I sent it to him. He replied to me and said, Turo, I, I like it very much. Unfortunately, after those days, he got a stroke. He was, you know, he was playing with my hand. And after that, he didn't record it again. But, um, but he really told me that he liked the tune very much. And uh, we're going to play it now. The composition I wrote for Oscar Peterson, entitled, of course, Oscar. Charlie Parker. Oh my goodness. 